And upon examining those records, there are log files that deal with adjudication. Those are gone. They're all gone? All of them? Yes. They would have been gone if I hadn't have done a backup. These people are being selected, not elected. And when the person's vote isn't being honored, something... Then it's all just an illusion. Something has to change. If I have to hand count every single election from here on out, that's my commitment to the people. That what I if it hand. costs you your life? Then I'll be with my son. I raised a Navy SEAL. I'm a Gold Star mom. Lost him four years ago. My blood and his blood is the same. I love this country. I believe this is our last chance to save it. And if we don't get this fixed, if we don't expose what they're doing, I believe we've lost this country. Hey, my friends, I, this is my second day on Lindell TV and I'm so excited. We're working out a few bugs, uh, but I'm telling you, this team goes around the clock working. I'm so in awe uh, as the Patriot friends they are and also their devotion to saving this country, providing a platform for us to share with you and to bring amazing guests on like what we're going to have today. And uh, before we get into our guest, I just want to thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you for supporting me through all of these ordeals. If you don't know my story, it's really your story. It's, it's, it's the, the effort by all of us to save this country. And many of you know that to save this country, we have to get our elections under control, transparent to the people and get rid of the criminals that are selecting our leaders, not electing our leaders. And so, you know, it, it, it involves such a large scale of patriots, just like you, everybody can do something, right? I always say everybody can do something. They can't get us all. And that is what they meaning the globalists, the elitists, the people that have been, uh, that's the shadow government that have been controlling the people in office, controlling the, uh, the wars and the border and the fentanyl and the human trafficking, all the evil that's come in um, to our country, the military aged Chinese uh, men coming across the border, uh, MS-13 and cartels and so on and so forth, meant to tear down our country. But you know, God is on our side. And so we cannot fail. And the guest today is, I'm so grateful for him, for his family who are now my tribe. Um, and I'm just so grateful. So I'm going to bring on, without further ado, I'm going to do one thing first. I want to thank our sponsor and uh, uh, Mike Lindell. Without Mike Lindell, there's so much that we wouldn't have known. There's so much support that we wouldn't have had. And so I want you to, um, to purchase his products. Love his slippers. I just, I, I wear his slippers inside, outside, <laughs> All, like just regular shoes, but they're so comfortable. The towels are amazing. The coffee is, is, you know, just, just so delicious. There's so many things. There's something for everybody, um, for gifts, for whatever you're going to do. But, so we're going to thank him real quick. And then we'll get on to our guest. I know you're waiting to see who that is. I think I put my producer on the spot here. Sorry. <laughs> Hello, I'm Mike Lindell, and I'm here to tell you about my new product from my pillow. Towels that actually work. Watch this absorbency test. Here's another towel that we randomly went out and bought. Here's one of my towels with a nice design. I don't know if you can see this, but you could line a swimming pool with this. I mean, this is crazy. Get rid of it. Towels that actually work. What a concept. I'm interrupting this commercial to let you know you can get our six piece My Towels, regular $69.98, now only $29.98. Or you can save 25% on our brand new kitchen towels made with the same technology as our famous My Towels. 
Also, we have bath sheets, bath towels, washcloths, hand towels, and so much more. And the best part, with your promo code, your entire order ships absolutely free. So go to MyPillow.com or call the number on your screen. Use that promo code to get deep discounts on all my towels. And for a limited time, your order ships absolutely free. <laughs> I love him. He is so good. And you know, it's interesting that thank you for, for purchasing his products and thank you for using uh, the promo code Tina. But here's an example of a man who went from deep darkness to the light and what a light he is. So coming on now, I want to tell you a little bit about, about um, Pastor Dave Bryan. Uh, when I went to speak at his church uh, just about 10 days ago, I had no idea what I was in for. But I'm going to bring him on now because I want to brag on him a little bit. And I want you to meet him. Hello, Tina. Pastor Dave, you are amazing. And thank you. I'm, I'm so excited that people are going to get to meet you today. And I know many people have. You've been at this for many, many years. Uh, your wife, Cheryl, is a blessing. Her her um, grandfather was a great evangelist, did miracles, did, you know, A.A. A. Allen, and uh, just spending time with you. But, you know, the powerhouse that you are and that your church is and all the things that, that you're doing, um, it, it just blows my mind. And so today we're going to get into some of them, but I want to give a little a little bit of a background. And if you want in our chat, if you want to put in your, you know, your type in your, your website or just speak it out loud, our producers will put that in the lower third uh, so that people know how to contact you. But um, when I met you, I had no idea um, what I was in for. Uh, a friend of a friend of ours who is also a pastor in your church for health and and um, had asked me to come and support uh, Charlita Bassett, who's running for Congress. Yay, Charlita, right? Yeah. Yes, and, yay, Charlita. And she is going after uh, Diane Feinstein's seat. Is that correct? Yes. It, yes. It, yes, and loves the Lord. She's just she's just shines uh, far above any of the other uh, any of the other candidates. And so we need to we need to support her in California to get her uh, because I believe California is going to turn around. I believe there's a lot more conservatives, but um, I'm going to turn it over to you. I just want to I, I want to get into this. You gave me this <laughs> book. We're going to talk about the book. We're going to talk about on the second half what you're doing now because it just blows my mind. So go <laughs> for it. give us a little background, um, you know, of your church, of the community. And um, you go for it. Okay. Well, first of all, Tina, I just want to say how honored I am to, to be with you. And uh, for all those that are listening, the first time I heard Tina Peters speak, uh, I not in person, but just uh, on, on a clip on the internet, I began to cry. And I told my wife, I said, I can't wait to meet her and give her a big hug and tell her, how proud we are of Christian patriots like her that are making a difference. And so, Tina, it was a real honor to have you at the church recently. And we love you very, very much. So thank you for this chance to be with you again. I was thrilled when you called yesterday and we talked for a while because we, we just love you and what you're doing and any chance to partner with you in any way is a good thing. So, uh, Cheryl and I pastor here at the Church of Glad Tidings. It's in Northern California, north of Sacramento, south of Chico, a little ways. We pastored here for 37 years, and we had never pastored before when we came here. Uh, we, we had had it up to here with what I call the great American religious enterprise. And I, I all I can say is that What's happening today in America, I think, is the hand of God uh, judging the great American religious enterprise, which has terribly misrepresented Christ. And so we see a lot of churches closing and some people are uh, anxious about that. I, I, I am thankful that there's a sifting process 
and um, the, the people that were just doing a religious version of a talk show, or uh, you know, it, it's uh, like a um, some kind of a uh, interactive comedy show in, in some of these uh, operations, but they're really not impacting their society at all. They're not impacting their city. When I was a young man, uh, I was on an apostolic team and they asked me to troubleshoot different churches and went to a number of them. And, and I would just ask them, how would the community be different if this church didn't exist? And you know, Tina, a lot of them didn't even understand the question. They would say, well, what, what do you mean? How would that affect the community if we weren't here? And I, I thought, exactly. You know, if, if it wouldn't affect the community, if you weren't there, you probably shouldn't be there. But anyway, um, so when we came here, I'd already had that experience, troubleshooting some churches and never wanted to be a pastor. But anyway, uh, God, I call him sometimes Jehovah Sneaky. Uh, <laughs> he's, he's able to make things uh, work out that you weren't even counting on. Oh, that, yeah. This I can say that. <laughs> yeah. And so we came down here in 1987 and met a guy that, um, that you met while you were here, Lou Benninger. Lou Benninger doesn't have a religious bone in his body. And uh, he had been running a, uh, a hippie, it was a nudist colony, a, a dope smoking nudist colony. And he had an experience with Christ and it changed his life. And uh, so I connected with him when I came down to, to Yuba City and I found just a, a honest hearted, hardworking guy that really believed the gospel could change the world. And God just knit our hearts together. And so I said, if I, if I came down to Yuba City, would you help me uh, with this church? And he said he would. And so we came down in 1987 and we, we asked everybody to step down from the church. It, it had a lot of problems and, and uh, had the, uh, the baggage of, you know, uh, the great American religious enterprise. But anyway, we asked everybody to step down and uh, we, I said, let's just uh, look at the life of Jesus Christ, not anybody else, just Jesus Christ, see what he did and try to do it. And if he helps us do it, we'll have a great church. And I remember telling him, if, and if this doesn't work, I'll go smoke dope with you. And, <laughs> he said, what? I said, listen, uh, I, I put. And you've never smoked up before. No, I, I, I grew up on a ranch in Idaho. And and he asked me, he said, you ever smoked up before? I said, no. But if the gospel does not work, I, I'm looking for a change of venue. So uh, he laughed. He said, OK. So we shook hands on it anyway. Uh, w when we got here. And we're really asking God, um, what what is the agenda of Jesus Christ uh, in the earth? And we found this verse in, in Acts, uh, it, and it says that Jesus Christ went about doing good and healing all those who were oppressed of the devil. And so I said, okay, that clearly tells us what Jesus was doing. Let's try to do that. I remember Lou saying, what, what's it mean, healing those who are oppressed of the devil? And I said, well, I'm not really too sure exactly. Um, it's just lives that are screwed up, as far as I can tell. And uh, let's try to help them. And I said, I think that if we really focus on, on doing what Jesus asked us to do, he'll help us as we go. So I said, let's do this. Uh, the first part says Jesus went about doing good. We don't have any questions of what that looks like. So let's really put our hearts into that. And if God wants us to heal those who are oppressed of the devil, he can teach us as we go. Uh, so we agreed on that. And we, uh, we um, established a motto, a ministry motto. that's real simple. And it's guided us for 37 years. It's simply find a need and meet it find a hurt and heal it. And we painted it on the wall. It's still on the wall in our Christian education building and, and it, it guides us. So for instance, when, when the world went into the chaos of the COVID con, 
we we got, got together and said, okay, uh, what does this community need right now? And how can we meet that need? And so we decided the last thing they need is for churches to shut down. So we announced Glad Tidings will be open every day of the week until further notice. And anybody can come for any reason. We'll pray for you. We'll, we'll encourage you. We'll, we'll inform you of, of what's going on as best we know. Anyway, those three years of the COVID con wound up being a, a wonderful blessing to us because uh, we were open. Other churches weren't. It caused us to network with new people from coast to coast and border to border. And um, it was a real a time of blessing for us. And we were able to be a blessing to a lot of other people. But that motto. Were you threatened, were you threatened to, to close? Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we were threatened all right uh we had uh general flynn come during that time again we were the only venue open in northern california and so he called us and uh of course charlita bassett who i want to give a plug for uh let me just say this the, there has been a stronghold of evil in california in those senate seats and we, we have a whole a mafia system. It's a political mafia that's been um, uh, that's been in power for a long time. But um, Charlita Bassett has the courage to fill that spot and fill it well. And so I just want to give that plug for Charlita Bassett. She is a wonderful person and very, very courageous. And um, so anyway, she knew uh, Michael Flynn and knew our church was open and connected us and that came, but uh, but when Michael Flynn came, the governor sent us a cease and desist order. And I laughed out loud when I saw it. I opened that and I said, are you kidding me? Uh, how do you get off on telling me to close the church down? Uh, I thought, why don't I just send him a cease and desist letter and tell him to <laughs> shut down the governor's office? So anyway, uh, I, our supervisor called and said, uh, "You, the churches have been deemed as non-essential. And I said, uh, who got to vote on that? And he said, well, that, it's just, you know, the, they've, they're non-essential. I said, no, actually, some of them are non-essential. Ours is not. Ours is essential. I'm not so sure your board of supervisors is essential. I think we'd do just fine without you. So if you want to close down, knock yourself out. We're not going to close down. And of course they said, oh, you can't, you can't do that. And I said, we'll, we'll see about that. Um, we've been open ever since they told us to close down and we're doing just fine. And so we got the cease and desist letter from the governor. You can't do this Christian Patriot event. I laughed out loud and I, I called our sheriff I said, Brandon, did you get a copy of a cease and desist letter from the governor? And he said, yeah. And I said, well, you know, we're not going to close, right? He said, I figured that. And I said, okay, <laughs> so let's talk about what we are going to do. I said, we've also heard from Antifa. They'll be there. We've heard from local Satanists, which for us is just another day at the office. That's not a big threat, but it happens a lot. And I said, we, we, we've been doing, dealing with the Satanists for, you know, 25 years. So that's, we'll handle that. What do you want to do about Antifa? And he said, well, I don't know. What, what would you do if I didn't get involved? I said, we'd snoop them out at the driveway and we'd uh, put them on the asphalt and cuff them and call you. And uh, he said, well, what if they cause trouble? And I said, then their mom is going to be crying at the end of the day. We are not going to let them come onto our campus and cause trouble. Uh, I said, if they throw a brick, we will shoot them. And he said, you can't do that. And I said, you, you know, I can, shoot. I can do that. I said, throwing a brick at a human being is assault with a deadly weapon, with intent for harm. Right. And so he said, yeah, you're right. I said, we're not going to let them do that, Brandon. Look at what's happening to our country. People just back down and back away and give up and let hell run rampant. And I said, Brandon, we're both Christian men. 
the Bible commands us to not allow evil to overcome us. And so I told them, I said, I, I hope that I can go for the next hundred years and never shoot anybody on our campus. But we have a security team that will do their job. And so I said, we'll, we'll meet them at the, um, at the driveway and we'll ask them to leave peaceably. And if they do, all will be well. If they don't, we'll ratchet it up to beat them at whatever level they want to play. So he said, and you saw what just happened. You saw what just happened with uh, the yep. big church in yep. Texas, right? I saw that. Yeah. And uh, okay. so Brandon said, well, that's okay. That's fair. He said, I know that's lawful. And so you just handle them as you see fit. And, and we did. And they came and we turned them. We stopped him at the driveway. He said, you need to set this dance out. You're not going to be happy with the results if you, if you unload here. And um, so they said, what are you going to do? And we had a, a Marine out there in full combat gear. And he said, well, if you get out of the car, I'll hit you with this taser. It'll make you crap your pants and assume a fetal position on the ground. That's where we'll start. He said, if you get up, this is a, a, a 40 caliber. Uh, if you survive that, there's a water cannon and the guys on the roof has have AR-15. So this is not going to be a good day for you if you get out of this car. And uh, they talked about it. It was a sedan and a van was behind them. They talked about it and they said, is there a place to turn around? And we said, yep, there is, right? They turned around and left and haven't bothered us since, which would be the case at every venue in America if, if citizens... Yes had the guts to stand up for their rights. It's ridiculous to see places burnt down because a car full of hoodlums want to cause trouble. And That's so, right. I used to tell my kids, I said, the only way you can take care of a bully is to it, beat them up. That's it. Uh, That's the only language exactly. they understand. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's the stop bullying campaign is hand them their butt on a platter. But anyway... Right. Uh, so we, we handled Antifa, but I was talking to the sheriff about it and he said, okay, you, you got the Satanist and Antifa. Uh, I said, what, what about the governor's office? And he said, well, what do you mean? I said, they are no different to me than Antifa. Uh, there, right. there are three groups trying to set us, shut us down. Think about that. It's a Christian Patriot event. Three groups are trying to shut us down. The Satanists, who worship the devil, and Tifa, who is a fascist uh, communist element, and the, the state of California. Wow. So I, I told him, I said, Brandon, uh, the governor's office is no different than Antifa or the Satanists to us. They are enemies that are trying to shut down a good thing, and we're not going to let them do that. He said, well, what, what would you do? And I said, same thing we'd do with Antifa. We'd tell them this private property. They're not welcome here. And and then we would escalate to, to one-up them. Uh, and I said, my guess is we would wind up arresting them and calling you. And he said, oh, don't, don't arrest anybody from the governor's office. I said, I, we will if they come on our property un, unwanted, uninvited. And so he said, well, how about if I, oh, excuse me? That's called trespassing, yep, isn't it? It sure is. And Americans yeah. don't understand that. They don't understand. We have abdicated most of our rights as American citizens. Right. But anyway, um, so he said, well, I'll send a, a few squad cars out there. And if you see anybody from the governor's office, just call us. We'll come get them. So that's what happened. And we had a thousand people. We had a wonderful uh, Christian Patriot event. Everybody felt safe. Uh, we had a wonderful time as we should be able to as Christian Patriots. And all the bad guys j just got ferreted out before they ever got on our campus. And um, so anyway, during those days, uh, we really you know, were blessed and we had Candace Owens here and Dinesh D'Souza came a couple of times. And uh, that's when I met uh, Dr. David Martin and Judy Mikovits. And we, we just connected with wonderful people from coast to coast. And um, 
uh, it was a it was a time of growth and blessing and the thing that maybe was the most meaningful to me is we were able to provide a a pattern or an example for other people who lack the courage to stand up and I, I made, I was praying in my office one day and God showed me just as clear as could be a, a poster. And it said, we will not comply with any uh, medical or political mandates that violate our basic rights. And I went in and told our uh, graphics team uh, what I wanted, how to make it. We made thousands and thousands of those posters and uh, we handed them out all over. But you know what I found out, Tina? I found out that the, um, the strength of the American people have been so eroded gradually that most business owners were afraid to put up a sign that simply said, we will not comply with mandates that violate the constitution i mean how yeah how could you not put yeah. that up as a american citizen you know it's it's interesting um uh dave that we you know they're afraid that we will learn our power not only our power in god which is you know what we stand on right. what this country was founded but our personal power yep. that's enshrined in, in the constitution and you know these things are you're modeling what every church should do you're modeling what every citizen should do and i've said to people before this is the year yes last year and the year before were the were the uh years of the breacher yep. you're obviously a breacher now that we have and people in j6 people at the border people you know pastors so on and so forth you know what what um, i've done with elections and others mike lindell and and such we've been the breachers we've when it wasn't popular we've gone through and we've busted in the doors That's and right. explosive the 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 chaos of going hey we are coming after you and we are not going to comply we're not going to back down we're not going right. to shut up and then other people this is the year of the whistleblower this is the year where more people are going to see the example of people like you and they're going to say hey you know i'm going to stand right. up because i look at the enemy as just a paper tiger you know he's he, he he uses fear and intimidation and you know the bible says that men's hearts will fail them for fear but well, we don't want our hearts no, to I... fail us right we need to be yeah. fearless we're going to take a break in just a minute. And then I want to get into a little bit about this okay. battle. Uh, <laughs> that is incredible. <laughs> and, I mean, you took on the head of the Satanist movement. I mean, the you know, so I'm not going to say any more <laughs> about that because I want you to say it. And then we're going to talk about what you're doing. I mean, when you told me yesterday about the, uh, the plans that, uh, I mean, they're big, big plans plan. that you guys already have in big place. Uh, you know, it's just, it, it just shows when one man and one group of people that are guided by God, what great things they, they can Amen do. Amen to that. So, so excited. I keep telling you, don't make me move out uh, there If now. I could, I would, <laughs> Tina, you know that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, golly, I'm telling you, you invited me in so much. But we're going to break for a, a quick commercial. Thank our sponsor again, who is just an amazing patriot himself. And then we'll be right back. I'm trying to think if my, my, uh, if my producer wants me to do this or, or he's doing this. This is second show, guys, so just be patient with this. I've been on Badlands for a year. Let's see. All right, hang on. I'm going to figure it out. Paula, were you there? I think he stopped for coffee or something. <laughs> well, let me tell you something. They have been up 24-7, and uh, he says he just got back. Can you play the uh, our commercial for us? I appreciate it. I'm Looks like you've been sleeping well. Megan, he's back. 
the my pillow guy. And you're looking good. I'm still feeling good. Well, just when you thought it couldn't get any better, we've got the best pillow ever, my pillow 2.0. <gasps> When I invented my pillow, it had everything you'd ever want in a pillow. Well, now there's new technology that makes it even better. My Pillow 2.0 has my patented fill combined with a cooling fabric with temperature regulating thread. My Pillow 2.0 is truly the next generation of my pillow. Now's the time to go to mypillow.com or call the number on your screen. Use the promo code to save 50% on your MyPillow 2.0. Not only that, for a limited time, your entire order ships absolutely free. You're sleeping even better. And cooler, too. And you're looking good. Feeling, Feeling good. good. I knew you would. MyPillow.com. Celebrate the new year, we're having the biggest sale ever on overstock clearance and brand new products. For example, save 60% on our Goose Down comforters, the best comforters ever. They go perfectly with our MyPillow bed sheets and duvet covers. Save 25% on our brand new kitchen towels. They're made with the same technology as our famous My Towels. Our initial quantities are extremely low, so get them now before they go. Our seasonal flannel sheets are finally in. You save up to 50% and they sell out fast every year, so order now. They're truly the best flannel sheets you'll ever sleep on. Or save up to 80% on all our clearance items. And this is where it gets even better. For a limited time, your entire order ships absolutely free. So go to MyPillow.com or call the number on your screen. Use that promo code to get deep discounts on all MyPillow products. And for a limited time, your order ships absolutely free. <laughs> I'm telling you, I just love that man. He is just amazing. So we're very grateful, grateful for him. So. I'm just telling you that your story is going to inspire so many people to stand up. And I was just talking yesterday, uh, Pastor Dave, with um, uh, Leon Benjamin. Do you know, you know, yes. Pastor Leon yes. Benjamin right? and with MAGA Black? And I'm, I'm telling you, you pastors that are setting the world on fire, uh, you know, people are looking, they're looking for someone that can, can show them what God really yeah. means. And I love, I love his, his going into the black community and, and saying, listen, you guys have been propagandized. You've been duped, you know, all these, the, and it's not just Democrat and Republican. We know that, but for, for a long history, the Democrats have been going in there to try to convince them and get their vote. And then they don't do anything right, to help the black right. communities. So these people are standing up for Trump. They are, uh, they're being lit on fire for, for, uh, for Jesus. And I'm, I'm just so grateful. Okay. Well, we're going to get into to this part of it. So, you know, you're a, you are a sweet guy. You're a teddy bear, but you are Tough. Oh my goodness. You are tough guys. Don't let the, uh, the exterior of this kind and gentle giant fool you because he has gone up against the biggest, baddest. Um, and this one here, uh, the many of, you know, or have heard of, um, Anton LaVey, the, uh, the author of the, uh, satanic Bible, right? right? Uh, and I'll give you, a, I'll let, I'll let Dave give you a little background on it for those of you that don't know this bad, guy, bad guy, but um, how Dave and well, God right. through Dave and these mighty people, Lou and the others you were talking about were able to actually bring him down. Dave is actually credited with his death, if you can imagine. <laughs> so, um, you know, we're, we're talking just miracles to bring down the the church of Satan and the um, and the forces of darkness. So I hope this will encourage you, Dave. Go for it, and then we, about uh, after about fifteen minutes, we want to go because we've got a break. We've got a hard break at the hour. Uh, we because Steve Bannon is oh on. How fun. So I want you, yeah. So we you know we we can't go over, but I want you to. Um, to just talk to us 
about that experience, what happened. Um, I'll put up, I think I have on my, I can screen share the, uh, the book if people want to order it. And um, so just talk to okay, us Okay, so um, let's go back to the marching orders that we felt like Jesus gave us, which was um, to go about doing good and healing those that were oppressed of the devil. And so uh, we grew the church up to about 1500 by just doing good. We, we just helped single moms and runaway teens and started drug rehabs, went into juvenile hall and all that kind of stuff. But there, there came a time in that process where um, this lady came into the church. We thought she was just a, a homeless person. And, um, and we, we love reaching out to homeless people and, and do it often and, and have a number of ministries that are just focused on helping meet urgent needs. So we thought she was one of those and didn't know who she was. We led her to the Lord in uh, uh, service. She prayed to receive Christ. And um, the next day she called and I had given her a contact card because she, she looked like she was needy and probably could use some help. So I said, if you ever need anything, call us. Well, uh, she did the next day. Long and short of it is we wound up moving her into our house uh, simply because we thought she had nowhere else to go and, and she had been on the streets. And she had told us that she was worried that people were trying to kill her. Uh, particularly, she said, witches are trying to kill me. So anyway, we didn't know anything about that. I grew up on a ranch in Idaho. I wasn't even sure that witches were a real thing anymore, you know, but, uh, but we do love people. And so we thought, well, whatever you might imagine is happening in your life, why don't you come and stay with us for a while, get the wheels back on your wagon. And so um, we moved her into our house and boy, oh boy, Tina, all hell broke loose. And it was the, the first night she was there. At 2 a.m., just we were sleeping soundly, uh, and all of a sudden, uh, a blood curdling scream, and she came rolling down the stairs from the the. Uh, we were in a big old Victorian house, and and she was fighting with something that she could see, but we couldn't. Well, Tina, I had never had any experiences like that, but I. I knew the Bible. I, I knew that there were evil spirits and I knew they were invisible, uh, malevolent uh, beings that bothered people. And she was batting at this thing and saying, uh, stay away from me, Knack. And so we just, uh, you know, they say necessity is the mother of invention. We, we did not know what to do, but, but we just started rebuking the devil we started, I mean, we got a Bible and put it on her. I thought that might help. We didn't know what we were doing. But anyway, we were asking God, please help us help this lady. And, uh, oh, probably 20 minutes into it, suddenly the evil spirit was gone. And we it was just like we'd been hit by a, a whirlwind. And she just looked up. She said, thank you. And I said, thank you? She said, yeah, thank you for helping me with Knack. And I said, well, you're welcome, but we probably should talk about who Knack is. She said, it's a murder spirit. I, I said, wow. okay. And you could see it? She said, yeah, couldn't you? And I said, no, we, we couldn't. We could just see you batting at something. And tell me how you know a murder spirit on a first name basis. And she said, oh, I dabbled in witchcraft. And I said, that does not sound like dabbling to me. Anyway, that started off our relationship and started me scratching my head trying to figure out who is this woman. And of course, we, we wanted to help her, whoever she was. But anyway, uh, that started happening every night from the first night we moved her in there at two o'clock, all hell would break loose. Everybody would sleep fine up to two at the dawn of the bell, so to speak, all hell would break loose. So after it happened about three, four nights in a row, I said, what's up with 2 a.m.? 
she said, well, it's the witching hour, obviously. I said, that was not obvious to me. I don't even know what that means. And she said, you don't know what the witching hour is? I said, no, I'm, I'm not a witch. I, I'm a pastor. She said, I thought everybody knew what the witching hour was. She said, witches do uh, incantations and rituals and blood sacrifices from midnight to two. And those blood sacrifices, they're paying evil spirits to do them favors. And at two o'clock, the rituals are over and it's time for the evil spirits who've been um, appeased and, and paid off, so to speak, in blood. Then they, they go to do the deeds that they were conjured to do. Well, that was new to me, but um, I could tell she was used to it. So long and short of it, Tina, is that every night we were fighting demons and it took a while uh, before uh, she finally was able to be honest with us. We don't have time to tell the details, but it is in that book. But uh, we, there was an incident that almost cost us all our lives um, where we were driving at high speed in a van and suddenly all the doors came open and and an evil spirit tried to throw her out onto the highway. And it, it was, it was bizarre. I tell about it in the book, but anyway. Let me tell, let, let me just say something here because Dave, your story and, you know, from spending time with you, I mean, I, I tried to, to get a flight out. I wasn't feeling good and just God just blocked it. So I was there speaking Friday night, Saturday night, and then ended up staying over Sunday. I mean, God did not allow me to leave for some reason um, from your church because it was so rich. I needed that uh, that infusion, if you will. And of course, you know, I I, I uh, became sick to probably make me make me slow down a little bit, you know, with with all the things in my life. But I've just decided, and I just checked with my producer. I want you to keep going. I we're going to we're going to keep this live uh, uh, broadcast going, and then when we have to break on the hour, because we only have fifteen minutes, and there's so much to unpack here. And I know the people are sitting on their seats. Plus, we have more after this. That I'm going to let you roll when we have the hard break at the top of the hour for Steve Bannon to come in. We're going to keep recording and then we're going to play this, this part two tomorrow. <laughs> so you just, take, you just take license to keep going as long as you have. The okay. Time. Well, um, so, uh, anyway. So this spirit, this the, knack, this knack murder spirit is after, well, knack, after we, her. We dealt with knack and we dealt with a myriad of spirits after that. Uh, the, the break point for her was an Indian spirit that uh, was the power spirit of the Alini Indian nation. And that was the Piazza bird, or we know it also as the Thunderbird um, or the Phoenix. It's, it's the same uh, entity. But anyway, uh, in America, the totem pole is the um it, it's the listing so to speak of the most powerful spirits in north america in the indian nations and so the oh. top of the totem pole we know that just in common vernacular the, the most important person you might say oh well over in that you know in that venue tina's the top of the totem pole right or whatever, but that means the most powerful, the most influential, the most important person. So the, that comes from uh, the hierarchy of North American Indian spirits. And so the Piazza bird of the Alini Indians is the top of the totem pole everywhere in North America. And so uh, we were dealing with that spirit. And of course I learned all this. I didn't know diddly squat when we started but we were trying to cast out this spirit. Remember, every night at 2 a.m., every night, it was a whole new venue, whole new deal with <laughs> different spirits. And uh, we we say today, um, uh, DJ, 
which is what we named her, or she named herself actually, but Deborah Joy, she had enough demons to start her own private division of hell. She she was demonized to the hair roots. And uh, the good news is, is she's serving Jesus and she's a lovely, lovely person. I love her with all my heart. But boy, oh boy, uh, that little gal was, she was conceived in a ritual that's called a power convergence. And, and of course, I didn't know any of these things. We just learned as we went. But um, power convergence is when you try to combine two powerful forces together to, to make uh, another force that is more powerful than either. And so that was a convergence between Crowleyite Satanism and and the uh, witchcraft of the Alini Indians. So Alistair uh, Crowley, who mentored Anton LaVey, um, th was into trying to galvanize evil worldwide into one system, which is the Antichrist system. But anyway, uh, this power convergence was Anton LaVey did a sex ritual with a woman named Madine, who was a, a Alini Indian witch, and and that is uh, where Deborah Joy was conceived. Now they named her Ray Ray LeVay after Ray the Sun God. But anyway, um, she was supposed to go through satanic ritual abuse and then and then um, go on into the rituals of defilement, which most people don't know about that. But Alistair Crowley came up with seven rituals that had to be done on consecutive Halloween nights for seven years in a row. And th this is on the top of years of satanic ritual abuse. And the whole idea is, though most people don't survive a lifetime of satanic ritual abuse, some do. And of those that are chosen because they've survived, many of them don't survive the rituals of defilement. But, uh, but if anybody goes through all of those, they stand a chance of being chosen to bear the Antichrist. That's the whole Crowleyite scheme of things. And so uh, she was in that process. We didn't know that. Uh, we didn't even know that she was related to Anton LaVey. We were just going through all these uh, intense uh, deliverances. And I told Cheryl, I said, Cheryl, there's no way she keeps saying she dabbled in witchcraft. Jeez Louise, she's you know, every demon in hell is coming through her. There's no way she just dabbled in witchcraft. So in this incident that I mentioned to you where uh, she was almost cast out of the vehicle, uh, when I got the vehicle stopped, uh, we were on the Winnemucca Indian Nation uh, and we were on a road trip. And, um, and we would have to pull off the road and minister deliverance and then we'd get a break and we'd drive for a few miles and pull off the road and minister deliverance. And we were just casting demons out of her. By that time, we'd done it a lot. But anyway, on the Winnemucca Indian Nation, suddenly there was a spirit that had almost killed us all in the van. And it was, it was quite a harrowing experience, but we, we got the van pulled over. There's stuff all over the highway. Uh, the doors are all open. And uh, I said to this spirit, I said, uh, who are you and where did you come from? Because it happened just instantly. And this evil spirit speaking through her, as evil spirits can do, um, they, it's what we call a body jacking. It's like that they're a, a sentient being that is disembodied. They don't have their own body. So they can come into a human being and use all their faculties and talk through them and, and do everything. They can rape people, murder people, all, all through the, the agency of the, the spirit taking over the human body. And so that's what we uh, call possession, though technically it's not a possession. But anyway, that's what we call demon possession. So this had happened and this spirit was talking through her. I said, who are you? Where did you come from? The spirit said, I'm the power spirit of the Winnemucca Indian nation. And I said, why did you jump on her? 
it said she's in my territory and she's marked with the blood of a virgin sacrifice so i can kill her if i want to yeah wow. i that was the first i heard of it, anything like that and i said what and this spirit said you humans are so stupid he said i've been watching you come down the highway for miles and just waiting for you to get into my territory to kill her and i said well you didn't kill her you tried and you failed and spirits by the way demon spirits are very arrogant and uh they they don't like to hear stuff like that so it was ranting and raving talking through her i can kill her if i want and i said no actually you just gave it your darndest and as you can tell she's still alive so obviously you could not kill her you tried to kill her and uh, I said, uh, and you know, I, Tina, I have this saying, I know God's talking to me when I think thoughts that are smarter than I am. I, heard that. <laughs> I can relate. <laughs> so I said to this spirit, I said, if you're the power spirit of this nation, every evil spirit on the Winnemucca reservation just saw you get your butt handed to you. You tried to kill us and you failed. And of course, the, it, it ranted and raved and was angry. I can kill you. I said, no, no, you, I didn't even know you were around. You, you tried to kill her. You failed. So I said, we can do this two ways as I see it. Uh, I, I can rebuke you and, and, and you could uh, do whatever you do to try to stay in a person. But eventually I will cast you out. You know that. You know the power of Jesus' name you know that uh, eventually, if I don't give up, eventually I will cast you out. And it will happen right here on your reservation with all of your minions watching you. I said, or you can just leave and we'll get off your reservation. And so it said kind of quietly, you promise you won't come back? <laughs> like it was not wanting anybody else to hear, you promise you won't come back? I said, yeah, I promise we won't come back. He says, if you come back, I have a right to kill her. I said, I got the message, but we won't come back. He said, okay. He says, a deal's a deal. And suddenly it was gone. And then uh, again, uh, the woman we called DJ, Deborah Joy, she was going by a different name, Ramona at the time. And she came to her senses because the evil spirit was gone. She said, what happened? I said, well, We'll talk about that when we get off the reservation. So uh, we drove to the other side of the rev reservation and I said, you need to get out of the van. She said, are you gonna leave me here? And I said, well, I, I haven't really decided yet, but uh, I might. And she was crying and please don't leave me here. And I said, listen, my entire family almost died back there. And yeah. the power spirit of the Winnemucca Indian nation said it was because you were defiled by the blood of a virgin sacrifice. And she started just weeping. And I said, listen, I don't even know who you really are, but this idea that you dabbled in witchcraft, I am so done with that. Nobody has this kind of uh, uh, demonic liabilities by dabbling in anything. And I said, um, I said, if you will be honest with me, we will go to hell and back for you. But if you are not honest, I'm going to leave you right here by the side of the road. And it's not because we don't love you. It's because truth sets people free. And, and Satan is the father of lies. And if you keep aligning yourself with Satan, we will not be able to help you. So I said, I want to, I want to hear it all. I want to know who you are, what's actually going on. And uh, she, she was just sobbing. She said, if I'm, t if I'm totally honest, will you let me stay in your family? And I said, yeah. So she said, okay. She was kneeling by the side of the road, just sobbing. She said, the, the virgin sacrifice was my little sister, Delena Starr. She said, I didn't want to kill her. My father made me. He put his hands over my hands and and cut her heart out and and she was just sobbing yeah. and i said your father 
did that? She said, yeah, he's an evil, evil man. And I said, who is he? And she said, Anton LaVey. And I wow. had seen him on the news and stuff. I said, I said yeah. the guy that carries the big snake around? She said, yeah, that, that's not a real snake. It can change shapes. And it's, a, it's his power spirit, Leviathan. And uh, I said, wow, uh, that's your father? She said, yeah. She told us about the ritual. And she said, uh, I've been involved all my life in evil stuff. And I'm supposed to go through a ritual in, on Halloween. And I'm not going to do it. I, I'll kill myself before I do that. Wow. Hang on one second, because I'm sitting on the edge of my seat. And I know everybody listening to this is sitting on the edge of their seat. But we're going to have to wrap just because yeah, of our time constraints. I but I want you to stay right. on because we're going to continue this. So when people watch uh, tomorrow, they will be able to see I the rest of this. And I hate to keep everybody in suspense, but this is so big. And I believe that you're speaking to many people out there that have been held in bondage that want to be set yeah. free. And there's a reason that you're on today as my day two second guest. Um, and so what we're going to do is we're going to break for now. And, and like I said, we're going to keep going. So everybody tune in tomorrow and to hear the rest of this interview, because I believe he's speaking to some people out there. And we know that what's going on with these shootings and churches and these uh, things that are going on, that they are uh, demonically inspired. Yes, are. Uh, and so this is a timely message uh, for of protection, of warning, and, um, and everybody needs to stay tuned. So we're going to, we're going to play a commercial and we are going to continue on. So tune in tomorrow. And I want you to keep listening because Steve Bannon's coming on and he's got a whole lot of information to give you. And then we will see you tomorrow morning. Dave, hang okay. on.